Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk and happy Friday. I love a Friday. Friday. Sorry, that was my Oprah moment. Um, okay, so I got this awesome message from a woman who explained to me that from watching Coffee Talk, she has been able to understand that you don't, as a woman, have to be only one thing. What does she mean by this? So many of us believe that when we get married, we all of a sudden have to become the Betty Crocker. Being a wife somehow transforms us into a woman who cares about nothing else other than keeping a good home. Um, keeping a nice home is important, um, but it can't be the only thing you do as a woman. We are such complex beings. There's so many layers to us. It is the same thing with being a mother. When I was young and my mother played poker, she was a poker player. And once a week she would meet with her girlfriends and play poker and they would rotate houses. And I remember holding onto her leg and crying some nights and saying, mom, do you have to go? Why are you going? Don't leave. And she would say, I have to go so that I come home every day. And I was like, what? And what she was saying was, I need an outlet. I need a hobby. I need something to do. You guys and your father cannot be my whole life or I will go bananas. Well, of course, when you're nine, you're like, what do you mean I can't believe be your whole life? Of course I can. I'm amazing. I totally get it now. Um, you know, my mom would drive us to school or drive us wherever and she would hear a song, typically a Sinatra song or an Elvis song, um, or like that song that reminds me of her, like, um, why do fools fall in love, why, right? Those like oldies. And she would crank up the radio like she was 16 and she would bop as she drove. And it is sort of like what I do now when I hear like old Biggie songs or, you know, whatever, you know me, anything hip hop, Missy Elliott songs from when, you know, from the 90s or early 2000s. And it doesn't mean I'm not a good mom because I go to date night or because I do whatever. It doesn't mean that I'm not, I, you know, we joke about those t-shirts that say, you know, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. The reason those shirts are so funny is because the stigma that is placed on us, that is if we are Christians or love Jesus, that we should be one, that we should all be uniform, you know, look exactly the same and behave exactly the same and always be Christ-like. That is not realistic. You can love Jesus and make mistakes. You can love Jesus and say the F word when you stub your toe or step on a Lego or forget to move the elf. These things happen. As women, we are so complex and we are so um, ever-changing. And thank God for that. Thank God for women who come into their own and go, you know what, I need a hobby. And like, I'm okay with that. And once a week I wanna go to a book club or once a week I wanna go take a hip hop dance class or once a week I wanna go to a movie by myself and eat a large popcorn because that's what I wanna do. It does not mean you are not a good wife. It does not mean you don't love your children. If you work outside the home or if you don't, whatever the case may be, you can be a thousand things if you wanna be thousand things and still love your husband and still nurture your children and still serve God. People say, Jamie, how do you do it all? Some days I do some things well and other things terrible. Um, I suppose I could sit home every day and play it safe and never get my hands dirty and never step outside the box and never try anything new, and would life be easier? Would I have less drama? Would I step in shit less often? Probably, but where's the fun in that? 
Where is the payoff in that? First of all, Michael would go stir crazy. He would be like, oh my God, get out from under my feet. He married me because I'm a doer and I'm a goer and I'm a trier and I'm a this, okay? He wanted that. If you ask Michael, what is the number one thing you are attracted to Jamie about? I'd like to think it's this glorious, thick, shiny hair, um, but it isn't. It is, um, he loves the fact that I push him out of his comfort zone and I am a dreamer. I'm like, I'm gonna write a movie. I'm gonna be in a television show. I'm gonna do a radio show. I'm gonna, whatever. And he's like, he loves the fact that I'm like, I'm gonna go and do and do and do. The difference between that and the running that I was talking about the other day is emotional. It's totally different. Um, but we're working on all of it. My point is that somewhere along the lines, we have been made to feel like in order to be successful in one part of our life, we can solely be that. You want to be a good wife? You can just be a wife. That's it. Be a wife every single day. But what we have really come to realize is women are the best when they are fulfilling at least most parts of themselves. I don't know that we can ever fulfill every part of ourselves because we have so many. We're like literally that piece of cake in the New York diner that's like, this thick and it's like the 457 layer chocolate cake that's a woman it really is not possible to satisfy every layer of ourselves but when we look back on our lives when we are dying and we look back I want all of us to say I got my hands dirty I, I, I married the man I love. I fought to keep it going. I had great sex. Some days I didn't. And I made beautiful babies and I loved them and gave them everything I had. But some days I went out and played poker. And when I was driving to church and Tupac came on, I had to turn it up because that's what cool moms do. We turn it up, right? That's part of it. When we go to church and we fall on our knees or temple or wherever we go and we serve that part of ourselves. And yes, you can love God and then come out and want to kill your kids because they're not behaving in the car. Yes, I'm that mom who can literally leave God <laughs> at 11, at at 9.32 and get in the car at 9.35 and be like, I will pull this car over and I will kill you. It is what it is. But I don't feel bad. It's not, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I'm a bad Christian because I just yelled at my kids. No, no, dude. Mm -mm, definitely not. Listen to me. Serve all the parts of yourself that feel alive. Whatever it is, you want to write, write. You want to sing, sing. Mute Tupac comes on and you love the song, turn it up. Doesn't make you a bad mom, doesn't make you a bad Christian, doesn't make you a bad wife. Like, you, somebody asks you to go to dinner and you're like, oh, I don't know. I have to, then I have to ask my husband to stay with the kids. <laughs> Did you ever see Chris Rock? He's supposed to stay with his kids. You don't get an award for staying with your kids. It's not babysitting. They're your kids. It's okay. Go to a book club. Go to a movie. Go to a concert. Take a dance class. Go to a painting, one of those cool painting um, classes where you sip wine, sip and paint or whatever. Yeah, so fun. Serve all the parts of yourself. Help bring those parts of you alive. And I love you guys. And I'm so inspired by all of your inspiration. It, like, all right, now I'm losing it. And too much coffee. Okay, I love you so much today. Have a great day.